Um, welcome to CCC Book Club Masters. Ryan can't do the session today. So as a leader, my responsibility. So um, I will do the session today. So a short recap of what happened is um, Rampa is now learning um, the everything about medicine now because since he's 12 years old, he's learning everything about medicine. And also yesterday, Reddy left off um, when he is doing kites. And, and by the way, Reddy, um, what page should we stop at? Um, let me check. Okay, just one second. Um, it's not showing on the screen. I, I think it should be around in chapter 12. It should be ending with the kites. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll show you if it's so, the correct one. So, um, masters, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So is it from here? I think it's a... I can't hear. I think it's a bit more down. Um, a bit more, a bit close. Mm. Um, we didn't go further. I think we were, it's like yeah. Um. Oh yeah. So, I think it was here. Yeah, around here. Yeah, I think it was this page. Okay. If my guide did permit me, another Lama turned to me with a smile. You are a Lama in your own right, Lobsang. You do not need to ask anyone now. Oh, yes, I do, was my response. The Lama Minya Gonda taught me all I knew and is teaching me all the time. So it is for him to say. The kite master supervised the removal of the kite, then took me to his own room. Where he, here he had small models of various kites. One was long, thin, thin, which one which somewhat resembled an elongated bird. <clears throat> we pushed the full size of the cliff many years ago. A man was in it. He nearly flew for 20 miles and hit the side of a mountain. He we would not have done, we would have not done anything with this type since. Now here is a kite such as you in wise. A strut across here and a holding bar there. We have already made one. We have, we have one already made and the woodwork is already finished. It is in the little discussed storage of the far end of the block. I have not been able to get anywhere to try it. And I am a little overweight. As he was about 300 pounds in weight, this was almost a class, classic understatement. The Lama Minya Dondap had entered this, this during the discussion. Now he said, we will do a horoscope tonight, Lobe Song, and see what the stars say about it. The booming of the drum, drums awaked us for the middle of the night service. 
As I was taking my place, a huge figure slided up, settled up, looming like a small mountain out of incense cloud. It was the Clyde Mast. Did you do it? He whispered. Yes, I whispered back. I can fly it the day after tomorrow. Good, he muttered. He'll be ready. Here in the temple were the flickering butter lamps and the sacred figures around the wall. It was difficult to think of the foolish monk who had fallen out of his present life. It had, if he had not been showing off, I might have not have thought of trying to stand inside the kite body and extend control the ex, extend control the lift. Here, inside the body of this temple, with the walls of brilliantly painted with holy struck pictures, we sat in the lotus style, each of us like a living statue of Lord Buddha, our seats for the square cushions too high. They had and they raised us some 10 or 12 inches above the floor. We sat in the double rows, each two rows facing the other. A normal service came first, the leader of the chants, chosen for his musical knowledge and deep voice, sang the passages. And at the each of each, at the end of each, his voice sank lower and lower until his lungs, lungs were emptied of air. We droned the response responses certain passages were marked which were marked by the beating of the drums or the part ringing or for the sweet tone bells we had to be extremely careful of our articulation as we believed that the discipline of the lamasari can be gorged by the clarity of its singing and the accuracy of the music. Tibetan written music could be, would be difficult for a Westerner to follow. It consists of curves. We draw the rise and fall of his voice. This is the bass curve. Those who wish to improvise add these improv improvements in the form of smaller curves with a large with the ordinary service ended we were allowed 10 minutes rest before beginning of service for the dead for the monk who had passed from the world that day we assembled from the given signal the leader of the race throne intoned the a passage from the barbo turtle the tibetan book of the dead so masses like they're now talking about the books um like in music now they're talking about it again so masters to be honest this might be my favorite part oh wandering ghosts of the monk who fell lala who this day fell from the fifth five feet of this world wander not among us for you have departed from us that this day O oh, wandering ghost of Mount Kapala, we stick this stick, we light the stick of your incense to guide you that you must, you, re you might receive instruction as to your path through the lost land and on to the greater reality. We chant invitations to of to the ghost to come and receive enlightenment and guidance. We younger than we younger men in our high in our high voices, the older monks growling the responses in in very deep bass bones. Monks and lamas sitting in the main body of the hall rows, facing each other, raising and lowering religious symbols in the monk in the monk. The monks and lamas, all wandering ghosts came come to us, and you may be guided. You see not our faces, smell not our incense, therefore you are dead. Come, that you may be guided. The orchestra of the woodwind, drums, conches, and silver. 
symbols filled in the pauses. Human skull inverted, inverted, human skull inverted, but filled, was filled with red water to simulate blood and was passed round for, for each monk to touch. The blood has spilled upon the earth among with a wandering ghost. Come that you may be freed. Rice grains dyed in a bright saffron were cast to the east to go the to go to the west and to north on this to the south. Where this wandering ghost where this wandering ghost roam to the east or to the north, to the west or to the south. Food of the gods is to cast the corners of the earth. And you Eat it, not not. Wherefore you are dead. Come, O wandering ghost, that you may be freed and guided. The deep past drum trouble with the rhythm of life itself, with the ordinary deep felt ticking of the human body. Other instruments broke in with the sound of the body, the faint rushing of the blood through the veins and arteries, the muted whisper of breath, in the lungs, in the, the gurgling of the body fluids on the move, the various creaking squeaks and rumbles which make the music of life itself, all faint noises of humanity starting off in an ordinary tempo, a frightened scream from a trumpet and the increased beat of the heart sound, a soggy twack and the sudden halting of noise, the end of uh, life of a life violently terminated. O oh, monk, that was hanging ghost, that is, it, our telepathies will guide you. Fear not, but lay bare with your mind. Receive our teachings that you may free that we may free you. There's no death, wandering ghost, oh, but only the life un. Ending. Death is birth, and we call to free you for a new life. Throughout centuries, we Tibetans have developed the science of sound. We know all the sound of the body and can we reproduce them clearly. Once heard, they are never forgotten. Have you ever laid up your head upon? pillow at the verge of sleep and heard the beating of your heart and the breathing of your lungs. The lamasari of the state oracle they put the medium into trace using this sounds and he and is entered by a spirit. The masters what they're doing is they're like freeing a ghost. So masters um I gave you like I might this might be my favorite part it actually is the masters, even though it's like supposed to be spiritual books, it also has some cool stuff in it. The soldier young husband, who was the head of the British forces invading Lhasa in 1904, testified to the powers of these sounds and to the fact that the oracle actually changed appearance when in trance. With the ending of the service, we hurried back to our sleep. With the excitement of flying and the very different air, I was almost asleep on my feet. When the morning came, the kite master sent me a message to be working on the controllable kite and inviting me to join him. With my guide, I went to his workshop and which he had fitted up in the old storeroom. Piles of foreign wood littered the floor and the walls had many diagrams of kites. A special model which I was going to use was suspended on from the vaulted roof. To my astonishment, the kite master pulled on a rope and the kite came down into the floor level. It was suspended on some sort of pulley arrangement. At his invitation, I climbed in. The floor of the box part had many struts upon which I one could stand in the, and a crossbar at waist left 
They will afford it a status satisfactory barrier in which one could cling. We examined the kite every inch of it. The silk was removed, and then the kite master said that he was going to cover it with new silk himself. The wings at the sides were not straight as on the other machine, but they were curved like a cupped hand held palm down. They were about they were about ten feet long and I had the impression that they would be very good lifting power. The next day, the machine was carried out into the open and the monks had a struggle to hold it down and carrying it across to the crevice, which with the strong updraught of air. Finally, they placed it in position and I, very conscious conscious my importance, clambered into the box part. This time, the monks were going to launch the kite instead of using horses as much as was more usual. It's considered that monks would exercise pull more control. That is why I called out, Tradi Dempa, ready, pull. Then at the first tremor, ran through the frame and I shouted, Onadual, goodbye. Sudden jolt, and so masters, all that is happening is like he's now doing the kite. So the the machine shot up like an arrow. I was a a good thing I was hanging on thoroughly. I thought, or there would be, or there would be some would be searching for my wandering ghost tonight. I was quite satisfied with this body for a little longer. The monks below played with the rope, managed it skillfully, and the kite rose higher and higher. I threw on out the stone with the prayer of to the wind gods. It just missed the monk below, far below. We were later able to use that cloth again that fell on at the monk's feet. Down below, the kite master was dancing with impatience for me to start my testing, and I thought I was better get on with it. Cautiously moving around, I found I, I, I found that I could very considerably alter the performance, the lift and altitude of the kite. I grew careless and too confident. I moved into the back of the box and the kite flew like a, fell like a stone. My feet slipped from the bar that I was hanging straight down by my hands at arm's length. By great effort, my my robe whipping and flapping around my head, managed to draw myself up and climb into the normal position. The fall stopped and the kite surged upwards. But by so look, masters, this is the picture that comes like once in a blue moon, because Ram like Love Sang Rampa himself draws it. So um one thing that you have to remember, Master, Master, um Lob Sang Rampa didn't write this book or whoever you search upon Google, um the third eye, like a different person comes onto the screen. He is not Lob Sang Rampa. Um he's he's like um like the spirit of real Lob Sang Rampa got into his um his body. I don't know what's his name, but it might be like Henry. Something his front like real name, so um he's like a British and he's a um, plumber, um so he 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 said that this came into my soul and I wrote this book. So the Dalai Lama also like stamped that this is true. Like Lord Sang Rampa actually came to me. So so see, masters, it's true. I had got my head free from the rope and I looked up. If I had not been 
a shaven head llama, hair hat would have stood straight on the end. I was less than 200 feet above the ground. Later, when I landed, they said I have come to 50 feet before the kite fall have was checked and it rose again rose. For a time, I clung to the bar, panting and gasping with the ex exer exertion of in the thin air. So my sis, remember, like when this um don't you should not go too high because um, climbing Mount Everest, you know, it's very high, it's very low oxygen. That's why they wear like these um oxygen tubes. As I looked up about over the miles and miles of the countryside, I saw in the far distance something that looked like a dotted line moving along. For a moment, I stared uncom um, uncomprehendingly, then it dawned upon me. Of course, it was the rest of my of the herb gathering party in their slow way across the desolate country. There were strong, they had big dots, little dots and long dots. Men, boys and animals, I thought. Slow, so slowly they moved, so painfully hesitant their progress. It gave me much pleasure upon landing to say that my party would be with us up within a day or so. It was truly fascinating to look over the whole blue gray of the rocks and the warm red orchard of the earth to see the lake shimmering in the far distance. Down below in the ravine where it warmed and sheltered from bitter winds, mosses, lichens and plants made a carpet, carpet work which reminded me of that in my father's study. Across it ran a little stream which sang to me in the night. Ran across it, yes, and that too reminded me painfully of the time when I upset a jar of clean water over my father's carpet. Yes, my father had a very heavy hand. The masses, he like Rafa's comparing, he dropped like some water in his father's um, carpet and his, his father had a big hand, so you can guess what happened was this. He got slapped. The country at the back, um, one minute, masters. The country at the back of the Lama Surrey was mountainous, peak after peak rising in the serried ranks until against the far distant skyline, they stood outlined blackly against the sunlight. The sky in Tibet is the clearest in the world. No one can see as far as the mountains will permit. There are no heat traces to cause destruction. Far I could see nothing moved in the whole vast distance except the monks below me. Those and those scarce and recognizable dots toiling interminably towards us. Perhaps they could see me here. And now, but now the kite began to jerk. Monks were hauling me down. Infinite care, they pulled me down, and I saw I could um, uh, avoid down damaging the valuable experimental machine. On the ground, the kite master looked with me at fond expression, put his mighty arms on the, my shoulder with such enthusiasm, I was sure every bone was crushed. No one could get a word in. For years he had theories, but could not put them in the text. Oh, One minute, please mute your arm. 
No one else could get a word in. For years he had had theories, but could not put them across in the test. His immense bulk made it impossible for him to fly. As I kept telling him, when he paused for breath, I liked doing it. I got as much pleasure out of flying as he did below designing, experimenting and watching. Yes, yes, lobe sound glow now. If you just move this over here and put that strut there, yes, that will do. Hmm, we'll take it in and start on it now. And then, and then it rocks sideways, you say, when, when you did this. So it went on, fly and alter, fly and alter. And I loved every second of it. No one but... I was allowed to fly or even step or even set a foot in this special cut. With each time I used it, there was some modification, some improvements. The biggest improvement I thought was a strap to hold me in. For the arrival of the rest of the party, put a stop to a kite flying for a day or two. We had to organize the newcomers into the gathering packing groups. The less experienced monks were to gather three kinds of plants only. They were sent to areas which, with, where such plants was plentiful. Every group stayed away for seven days, ranging the sources of supply. On the eighth day, they returned with the plants, and which was spread on the clean floor of the storage room. Very experienced llamas examined every plant to make sure it was free from blight and of the right type. Some plants were and had the petals removed and dried. So Ma says he went in the kite, he came down, and now he's talking about the plants. We know Rampa, right? One subject to another subject to another subject. Very experienced llamas examined every plant to make sure it was free from blight and not flying. Some plants had the petals removed and dried. Others had their roots grated and stored. Yet others, as soon as they were brought in, were crushed between rollers for the juice. The fluid was stored in tightly sealed jars. Seeds, de leaves, stems, petals, all were clean and packed into leather bags to quite dry. The bag should have contents noted on the outside. The neck could be twisted in to make it watertight. And the leather would be quickly dipped in water and expose the strong sunlight. Within a day, the leather would have dried as hard as a piece of wood. So hard that the bag become that to open it, they were tightly twisted and would have to be knocked off. In the, the dry air of Tibet, herbs stored in this way would keep for years. After the first few days, I divided my time between herd gathering and kite flying. The old kite master was a man of much fluence, he said, influence and he as he said the views of my, the prediction concerning my future knowledge of machines in the sky was as important as the ability to gather herbs and classify them for three days a week i flew in the cuts the rest of the time i was spent in riding from the group from group to group so that i could learn as much as possible in the shortest time Often high above in a kite, I would see over the now familiar landscape there and see the black yak eyed tents of the herb gatherers. Around them, the yaks would be grazing and making up for lost time. The time at the end of the week 
when they would well to carry in loads of herbs. Many of these plants were quite well known in the eastern country, but others had not been discovered by the western and had and so had no Latin names. A knowledge of herbs had been great use to me, but the knowledge of flying not so not less so. We had one more incident accident. A monk had been watching me rather closely, and when it was his turn to fly in an ordinary kite, thought that he could do as well as I. High in the air, the kite seemed to be acting strangely. When he saw the monk was flinging himself in an about in an attempt to control the position of the machine. One specially rough, large, the kite dipped and tilted sideways. There had been a ripping and splintering woods, and the monk came tumbling out of the side. As he fell, he spun head over feet, with his robe whirling over his head. A rain of articles fell down. Sampa bowl, wooden bowl, cup, rosary, and various charms. He would no longer need them, spearing end over end. He finally disappeared in the rain. Later came the sound of impact. All the good things come too quickly to an end. The days were full of work hard work, but all too soon, for three months, was it drew close, too at close. This was a member, first of a near number of pleasant visits to the hills and to the other tree, Tra Yelpa near Lhasa. Reluctantly, we packed our few belongings. Uh, I was given a beautiful model man lifting kite in the kite from the by the kite master, which he had made specially for me. On the day, on the next day, we set off for home. A few of the I was given a beautiful model man lifting kite from the by the kite master, which he had made specially for me. On the next day, we set off home. A few of us, as on arriving, did a forced ride. The main body of monks, acolytes, and pack animals followed in a leisurely manner. We were glad to be back under our iron mountain, but sorry indeed to be parted from our new friends and the freedom of the hills. So, Master... Uh, Master, um, Mukun, should we stop here? No, let's stop. Let me um, go for five or six more minutes. So, Master, what um, is happening right now is like... Um, 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 we have done, he had like picked some herbs and he was talking about kites and also he was going home. So, uh, let's, so the next chapter, chapter 13, first visit home. Okay, let's stop here. Okay. I'll start recording now. Or do you want to ask feedback? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What about uh, first, uh, Joshua? Um, today we could, um, you did very good, but I think the, my most favorite part today would be the, the part where we, where we talked about the machine that with the wings. Okay. Thank you. Hater?
did Mukun, you have did it very well. For me also, it's the same part. My, my favorite part. Thank you, Hetal. You lost. <coughs> okay, let's stop the recording.